Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be showing you how to build one of my FPV plates. Now I often get asked on the channel which camera are you using for your FPV plate and I reluctantly tell them it's the one gram camera from FPV Hobby. Why reluctantly? Well first of all the camera is quite expensive. It's a very good camera, probably the best out there but it is expensive, it's 25 GBP just for the camera and also it requires the wide angle lens and this is the problem. The wide angle lens has been out of stock probably for about a year and I have since then been looking for alternatives and Banggood have seen that and come out with this which is a 3 gram camera. Now you may be thinking that the camera that FPV the hobby cells is a one gram camera. Yes, it is. But as you need that wide angle lens to get a decent result from it, the wide angle lens they sell actually weighs 1.5 grams as well, meaning that the total weight is 2.5 grams. So with this weighing 3 grams, it's not that far off the mark. Also, this camera includes a microphone, which the other one doesn't. So here is what the camera looks like and according to the specs on Banggood it has got a field of view of 170 degrees. Compare that to the field of view of the FPV hobby wide angle lens and it claims that it has a 110 degrees field of view so we can check that out later. A slight anomaly that I notice here is the spec sheet that comes with it. It says the voltage range is 5 volts to 12 volts but on the Banggood website it says that the voltage range is 3.7 volts to 5 volts. So let's look at the other components that I'm going to be using in this build. This is the platform that you get from Picnic Quads that I'm going to be hot gluing this to. We have a VTX here that is not available yet. The reason that I'm using this is it has an audio option and of course this camera has a microphone as well so I hope to be using that. I'm going to be using using plenty of micro JST cables. This is the 1.25 pitch female and male. And lastly, I'm going to be using the 5 volt regulator that you can buy from FPV Hobby. So let's get and build it and put it all together. Okay, so one of the first things that I like to do is take one of the female JST connectors here and attach it to the voltage in and the negative in on the regulator. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take these wire cutters and I'm going to cut it to length, making sure that we have given ourselves a little bit of extra length so that this can hang off the edge of the FPV plate. I'm then going to strip these wires and you do that by cutting into the wire very carefully and then stripping the end like that. Same with the other wire. Now you have to be so careful with this because these wires are so brittle but what I plan to do, the black wire is going to be the positive and the red wire is going to be the negative and that is because I like this to be compatible with my 80816 and the Mobius battery which has a reversed polarity so if you're not interested in doing that then don't follow that routine but that's what I'm going to be doing. So here are on the regulator here, this side, if you look at the orientation there, it's probably not going to show up well on the camera, but there is the voltage in and there is the ground. So here I'll be reversing this and the black wire is going to get soldered to the voltage in and the red wire to the negative. So what I like to do here is use my cheap helping hands, which is a pair of pliers with a rubber band around it. Then I am going to twist these wires so we don't have any of the wires flaking off. And then I'm going to feed these through the holes there and solder them in.
Okay, so doing the first one, I have poked the wire through. You can't quite see very well at this angle, but you'll be able to see afterwards. Just going to put a blob of solder on there, and then solder this one up here. Okay, there we go. Then going to take the cutters here and cut off that excess bit of wire. Next with the negative wire. Okay, you can see there that I have put this wire through and then bent it up so it sort of stays in place when I can solder it. Okay, let's get a better angle there so you can see. So I'm just going to put a blob of solder here and then solder this wire to its join. There you go. And I'm going to cut off that excess wire there just so that we don't have any shorting opportunities. Okay, so we've got our voltage in and our negative in. Next is to attach all the other stuff to it. Okay, so next is the camera. I'm going to cut this cable off here. I always like to keep the cable long, but if you're feeling daring, you can cut it to the length that you want. But I always like to leave some room for error. So I'm going to snip these connectors off here. Ouch. Next, I'm going to strip all these cables with the same technique that I used on the JST connector, and then we're going to connect them up to this regulator here. This regulator allows for audio, video, voltage, ground, and RSSI. It basically connects a bunch of the connectors up, which is great for what we want to do. Again, I'm very carefully trying to strip these wires. Takes a couple of goes. Try not to squeeze too hard, otherwise you'll cut the wire. You can see there, it cuts it off. You can use a knife as well, exacto blade, whatever you want to do. You can even get wire strippers, but these are really thin wires. I think they're 28 gauge, so you may struggle to find a wire stripper this small. Oops, I made that one a bit too long. <laughs> Let's cut it a bit shorter. Okay, that is all our wires stripped on the camera. Next is to solder them to this board in the correct holes. So I'm going to do them one by one here and make sure we don't have any shorts. I'm twisting the cables and I'm starting off with the audio cable. So pretty much standard white is audio, yellow is video, the positive is red and the negative is black. Just twist the wire there and hopefully, so you don't want to get any spikes not going through the hole because that could short out and hit one of the other terminals. We don't want that. So I'm going to poke this one through here, which is the audio channel. Then I bend it up like that to make sure that it's bending away from any of the other holes. And it also kind of keeps it in place. Mm, not quite. <laughs> bend it right over. Then I'm going to take my gripping helping hands there and I'm going to solder it in place Okay, that's done. On to the next one, which is video. 
again, twisting this here and putting it through the next slot, which is video. So fiddly this is. Not for the faint-hearted. Okay, and our video cable is connected. Now for the voltage and ground. So in this case, the camera's voltage is in red, so that is still going to get connected to the positive. It's only this side that we are reversing it. So the red wire is still the voltage in on the camera, which is kind of confusing. And this is where the biggest risk is when doing this kind of work, is getting these the right way around. So next we are taking the red wire of the voltage in to the camera and that is going to go next through here. Just going to bend it upwards like all the other ones so fiddly. Put it in my helping hands again and solder it in. And there you go. Now all that's left to do for the camera is to solder in the ground, which is here. And that's going to go into the ground option, which is there. Because that one's on the end, I can point it up away from all the others. Back in the helping hands and solder it on. You have to be careful with this one because it's very close to a component. You don't want to mess with that. And there we go, you see? You want to be careful that there are no shorts and you just want to look at them very carefully, but I don't have any there. Cut off any excess tiny bits of wire that may be poking out. We've got a little one there that is now gone. We don't want any bridges between these connections. And there we go. We can now move on to the connections to the VTX. Okay, so now it is time to do the same with the VTX. You can use any micro VTX in this scenario. It just so happens that this particular one has wires coming from it already. And same as before, the yellow is the video, the red is the positive voltage, the white is the audio, and the black is the negative. Now, if your VTX doesn't have this wire, you need to solder it to the VTX and solder it to the correct connectors on the 5 volt regulator but as this one has a connector on the end I'm going to cut it off so that's the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave the wire quite long just in case I make any errors and we're gonna snip it off at this point I can actually remove this connector from this particular VTX so that I don't have to bother with moving it around a lot. So I'm going to move that over there. The next thing that I'm going to do is strip these wires so that we have got some of the inner wire showing. Okay, so same as before, I am taking the audio wire and connecting it up to the audio hole there. And I'm going to bend it over, making sure that it doesn't touch any of the other contacts. Then I'm going to take my helping hands and hold it into place. Take the soldering iron and solder it into place. Okay, we've got a good join there. So the next one is the video. Again, I'm sliding it through very carefully, ensuring that none of the wires get split and bending it upwards. Placing it in the helping hands again and adding solder again. We've got a nice join there, so I'm going to connect the 
plus voltage here. And just twist it so that the wires don't split apart. It's gone through there. I'm going to bend it upwards, same as all the other ones. Making sure that it doesn't connect with the other holes. Put it back in the helping hands. And I'm going to solder it again. There we go. And I'm going to take the ground and push that through the hole. And again, bend it upwards. It's very fiddly, this. I don't deny that. And then take the helping hands again. And we're going to solder the last connection in. There we go. Now, you only get about 20 bends out of these wires, and then they snap off. So just a warning to you there. We are going to cover this in hot glue, making sure that none of these can move. But the next thing to do is connect it all up and make sure that it works before we connect it to the plate. Now, at this point, I would recommend you take a long look at what you have done. Check your connections, double check them, quadruple check them because if you plug the battery in here and something is wrong you're going to get a lot of smoke and your components are no longer going to work so definitely take a long time looking at it and if something is wrong you can desolder it and resolder it but the next thing to do before we connect this to any FPV plate is make sure that we get a result out of it so let's do that next. Okay, so I've got my 80816 slash Mobius battery here. It's actually a modified Hubson Q4 Nano battery, and I have reversed the polarity so that it matches that of the 80816. I used to use this to power my FPV gear before these regulators came out to eradicate noise, but there's really no need for it anymore. However, it's going to be good to show how this all powers up. So I'm using my VRX, which is over there. It's plugged into the computer. It's going through virtual dub, and that's going to show the initial video what it looks like. So without further ado, let's plug this in. Okay, and the first thing that I notice is, well, a couple of things. The angle is really wide. I'm really impressed with that. And also the color saturation. Look at that red wall. It is so red. I'm really pleased with that. So first initial impressions are good. You can see that I've got the audio meter showing there at the bottom. So the microphone is working. I'm not expecting the quality to be brilliant. Of course, it's a mono recording and it's really more suited for the CCTV sort of genre rather than FPV, but it's good that we've got that option there. The next thing to do is package all this into my FPV plate and then stick it on a quadcopter. So let's do that next. Okay, so now I'm going to be attaching all this to this Perspex plate. Of course, if you don't want to go down this route and want to attach it directly to your quadcopter, that's absolutely fine. I just like to swap my stuff around. I'm going to be using my hot glue gun. So this little camera here has got this microphone under there, and I find it quite useful for mounting it onto my plate. Now, you might think that I'm doing all this backwards, and yes, I am. This little cut out here is meant for your camera, but I never found a decent way to mount a camera on here with this gap. So instead, what I do is I mount the camera at the front here, and then I mount the VTX at the back. So I'm going to do that the same with this one. So I'm going to place the camera on here and I'm using the microphone underneath to sort of keep it in place. Then holding it in place with my fingers, I'm going to just run some hot glue over the gap. I don't want to get the microphone, so I'm just going to hold it there until it dries, which shouldn't take long for hot glue. I'm just going to peel away any mess here. That should take just a few seconds for it to dry. Okay, so that has dried enough there. I'm now going to apply it everywhere else. I'm applying it to the sides here. 
and this does take up a little bit of extra weight but what I really like about hot glue is that you can remove it quite easily it's strong but you can remove it and some people use liquid tape on their wire connections as well I like to use hot glue again because it's easier to peel off so I'm going to cover up these connections with hot glue from this side I'm also going to get the hot glue underneath as well make sure that this thing isn't coming out but I'm avoiding the microphone as best I can because that could be quite tricky to remove okay so next I'm going to glue in the regulator now this is important you want to make sure that the regulator is as far away from the VTX as possible because these regulators give off noise themselves so I'm gonna place that up against the camera it doesn't give off noise to the camera so I'm just gonna hold that in there and then I'm gonna hot glue in just a dab on the side there and you have to wait for it to dry okay I'm also going to attack it from underneath as well you have to be very careful I try to avoid the components as much as possible because if you ever need to remove this hot glue is very good at latching onto those chips and is able to remove them with hot glue you always get these little strings of stuff just have to try and peel them off and cut them away with cutters when you're finished it's quite a messy job this so this wire here is unnecessarily long but I like to keep it long in case I ever need to cut them apart you may disagree that's completely up to you but I hot glue this into place a quick tip here for you folks when your hot glue gun runs out of hot glue just simply take another glue stick dab some hot glue on the end there and then push it in and it sticks to the end of the previous one lastly I'm gonna add some hot glue to these connectors here because they're gonna move a lot as I'm switching batteries out and things so just get the underneath there and also the connectors on top here as well just want to make sure that they're not going to move otherwise they will break at this point I have decided to switch out the VTX for a couple of reasons this one isn't available yet and I need to do some more testing with it but secondly, I want to compare this camera to the FPV hobby camera, which I have got here. And in order to get a fair result, I want to use the same VTX, which is this ready-made RC VTX. Now, it is smaller. It's not as powerful as this one. And it doesn't have audio. But I wasn't impressed with the audio quality. It's nothing to do with the camera at all. It's just that we don't really need audio for this hobby and you're just going to get a lot of static if you're using the audio from the cameras, you get breakups. Maybe it's better for if your video transmitter is stationary, but as we're moving around a lot, we're getting lots of hiss, lots of noise and breakups and there really is no need for any audio. Both of these VTXs luckily are using micro JSTs. However, this one's a four pin to cater for the extra audio channel and this one is a three pin. So what I have done is using a screwdriver, you can get into these micro JST cables and you can lift up the pins and slide them out. And so I have slid this one out and placed it into the three pin JST connector and we just have the audio wire hanging loose here I could cut that off but I'm just gonna leave it there I may fit another VTX to this eventually that has audio and do some more testing with it but here you see I can now just plug this straight into there and so the next thing that I'm gonna do is hot glue this in now I normally wouldn't hot glue a video transmitter in but this one is so low powered and it doesn't get hot so it's not gonna melt the hot glue so I'm gonna be able to hot glue this in and it's gonna be nice and neat so we've got this little gap here which is meant for the camera however I find this VTX fits perfectly in the space so I'm gonna take my hot glue gun 
and I'm just going to tack it into place this side first and then wait until that dries a bit so it stays in place and then we can flip it over and apply the same this side I also like to put hot glue on this connector here because it has a tendency to bend and snap off something extra that I do if you're removing this cable quite a lot which I do because I'm always switching stuff out and testing it and just apply it in this side as well it probably adds more weight than it should and you could use an elastic band to keep it in place and that's what I use on the VTX's that get hotter but this particular one doesn't get hot enough to melt the hot glue so we're all good I'm also going to hot glue some of this wiring as well so it's a bit neater but obviously you can make your wires neater, you can cut them shorter if you wish. Okay, so now that this is all hot glued up, let's see how much this all weighs compared to the other FPV plate that I made with the FPV hobby camera on it. Okay, so first of all, the new FPV plate with the Banggood base camera, 10.1 grams and my old FPV plate with the FPV hobby base camera. Now this is a little bit unfair because this one has got a couple of extra JST cables on it for testing so they're probably going to weigh about the same. This one's a little bit heavier so yeah that could be because of my extra JST cables but not bad at all considering this one was advertised as three grams it's a little bit off-putting it's actually ended up being lighter than my original plate so I want to show you how to connect these FPV plates to the quadcopter but also why I create them in this way as well so we've got two very different quadcopters here in fact I've got a lot of quadcopters and they fit different purposes so this is the the alien Wii based quadcopter and it's a bit too big to fly indoors but flies amazingly outdoors and to have a FPV kit attached to it permanently to me would be a bit of a waste when all we really need is one of these plates and we can just switch it from that one to this one. Now this quadcopter is a Hubson based quadcopter and it's a lot smaller and it works a lot better indoors it can get into smaller places and is much more nimble for that purpose but again if I was to attach the FPV gear and it was permanent I'd have to have a separate camera for this one but of course I don't I can just use these plates now I know I've made a lot of these plates and that kind of contradicts what I just said but I've built these for the channel if I was doing this for myself I would just build one of these and then I could switch it between my quadcopters but also of course I've got my 808 16 base plate if you want to create some HD video you can use that but if you just want to have fun for yourself you can just use these ones which are a bit more lightweight and you'll get a bit more thrust out of it. So on all of my quadcopters I get a male JST connector coming off from the power there. Now they are reversed polarity and that is because the 80816 is reversed polarity and I like to keep everything the same. So in this instance the black wire goes to the positive and the red wire goes to the negative. Same with this one as well. So let's take this FPV plate that I just made and we can connect it underneath the quadcopter like that and then just take a rubber band and you can twist it over a few times make sure that it is straight make sure that the band is on nicely and then you can take your JST connector here and then plug it in to the one on the board simple now we just need to band the battery underneath and there we go 
What I like about the picnic quads frame is they are designed for each other. So you can see there, this is the FPV hobby camera. That will just slot onto the top there and it fits the camera perfectly. And I can just, again, band it round as many times as you want to make it nice and tight. And then plug in the JST connector and again, we are good to go. So I've already done a full flight of this camera on the channel, so I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to show clips. But look at that sky. It is just so blue. I just love the saturation of this camera. This video was taken at a different time of day than the video that's already on the channel. It was about 12 noon and it's very sunny. And this camera just absolutely thrives in those conditions. It might not be for everyone, but I absolutely love it. Here as well, we've got a really fast flight. That is something that I picked up before. With the wider angle, you get a more accurate speed. Now, I'm approaching the trees here, and you can see I've got a perfect view of the trees, despite the sun being right in front of me. Um, that is in a stark contrast to the FPV hobby camera, which is coming up next. So, here we go. This flight was taken directly after the Banggood camera, and you'll notice straight away that it's a duller picture and the colour is not as saturated. Now, as I mentioned, some people might prefer that, but I prefer the higher saturation. And I do exactly the same sort of flying style here and flying under the trees, trying similar patterns, doing rolls to get a similar sort of uh, experience from the Banggood camera. So here I'm facing the trees and I just get a very dark patch. I can't really see where I'm going, but then when I get closer to the trees, it becomes clear. But I tell you, I did a lot more crashes with the FPV hobby camera than I did the Banggood camera. So maybe it's not so good in those situations. Here I make another attempt and again I struggle. I have to go slower than I was going with the Banggood camera. So that is just something that I picked up and it's a preference to me. So here now I have changed quadcopters, same FPV plate. This is the one that I've built in this video, but I've changed it to the Hobson because it's more suited to flying indoors. It did take me a while to adjust to that wide angle lens. I'm used to flying around the house with the FPV hobby camera. Of course, I've been doing that for about a year, but once I adjusted to it, I really liked it. And here I'm flying around different rooms which have different lighting settings and this camera is coping really well. Here I'm taking a look at the quadcopter in the mirror. I always find this freaky because we're used to looking into the mirror and seeing a person instead of looking in the mirror and seeing a robot. So I really like to do that. This is the test here of the camera threading the needle through the doors. I really like to do that and in fast flight as well and another test as well is getting behind these chairs there's only a couple of foot of space to do that there and I'm able to do it another test that I like to do is proximity flying in the house this is underneath these chairs very difficult to do but really nice with this wide angle you can see how close you are to things and make sure that you're not drifting and hitting things and again another massive burst into the hall there and looking at myself again in the mirror of the oven there um, is, I just find that really odd. Also I do that so that I can check if the LVC is going. Again I approach this pantry here which is dark, there's no lights on it but as I approach it it becomes lighter. So this shot, what I did is I turned both of the FPV plates on at the same time, removed the antenna from the video receiver, and then whichever one was closest to the receiver, it flipped between the two. So this one here is the Banggood camera, and then this one here is the FPV hobby camera, and I flip between the two. You can see there that the Banggood camera has slightly better clarity in the FPV 
hobby camera has a narrower field of view and also the colors are better I think as well on the Banggood camera. Uh, what I did next was I went outside and this is telling of the dynamic range. This shot here with the slightly bluey sky is the FPV hobby camera and the black and white shot is the Banggood camera and it's clear to me that the FPV hobby camera is doing much better in these low light conditions. It's even managing to pick out colors. I have no idea how it's doing that because it's pitch black. You can see there that the sky is slightly blue and that is because there is a supermarket over there with very bright lights on its car park and somehow this camera picks it up and I think that is what you are paying for with the FPV hobby camera. It is a very good night vision camera. You still can use the Banggood camera in the dark but it's a little bit more grainy. Now it wouldn't be a proper test if I didn't try and take it apart so let's see if I can find the screw diameter and also the thread size of this wide angle lens to see if we've got any more options if that is too wide for you. So let's see if it just comes apart. Oh yes it does. It's quite stiff but it comes out. Oh that's really nice. Um, you want to make sure though if you're doing this that you will need to refocus it when you put it back in. So the first thing to do is I've got this ruler here and let's see if I can see the diameter size. It's an M7. <laughs> that probably doesn't mean much to you but it's a good start an M7 because it's quite a popular screw size. Okay, next test. This is a screw thread measurer and I've set it at 0.3 pitch for a reason because I'm hoping that it's going to match. And yes, it does. <laughs> Why is that significant? Well, it's an M7 with a 0.3 pitch, which means it has the same specifications as this, which is the 808-16D lens module, which does not have such a wide field of view as this one. So if you're not happy with that, you can take your 808-16 lens module and take the glue off there and you can unscrew it and this is going to screw directly into here. Yes it does. I wanted to check all that because obviously I didn't want to rip the thread out if it was all wrong. Ah, oh, this camera just gets better and better. So there we go, that is my FPV plate build. I think all three of these actually serve their own purpose now after testing them out with each other. I think the Banggood camera is very good in the daytime, but it's not as good as a night vision camera. So what I will do is I will take the FPV hobby camera and probably retire it as a daytime FPV platform, but use it in the evening because it's better for that. You still can do nighttime flying with this though. You just have to make sure that there are some lights around. And then of course we've got my 80816 platform. It's a little bit heavier, but it's going to get you the HD footage and it's a really nice FPV experience as well. So there you go. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe and cheers.